live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Houston Life on this Wednesday, February 23rd. I'm Courtney Savala. Hi, Courtney. Hi, everyone. I'm Derek Shore. Glad to have you with us today. And today on Houston Life, we have the local nonprofit that is helping put an end to homelessness in our community. How Star of Hope is giving back, and you can too. Then a look at the reimagined Barbara Jordan Post Office downtown. It is now post Houston and has quickly become a hotspot to eat, sip, and enjoy our beautiful downtown sky. So gorgeous. Plus, we're taking you inside this brand new 360 degree immersive Frida Kahlo exhibit where you can actually step right into her art and her life. Beautiful. Also, Joe Sam is here with what he has coming up. Hey, Joe. Hey, guys. Yeah, today I'm giving you a look inside the Imani School and their ongoing efforts to inspire students with African American literature in celebration of black history. Okay. Looking forward to that, Joe. Before we get into all of that, though, it started out as a rather cold and drizzly morning. Some people might say it feels like summer that we've had the last two days is over. I know, I was going to say, our good friend Winter is back, <laughs> and so is our other friend, Frank Billingsley. Good to uh, see you, Frank. Hi, how are you today? <laughs> we're cold. Uh, it's, yeah. You know, it's uh, like all of a sudden you go, oh my gosh, we're still in February, aren't we? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It feels and, good to bundle up. And an update to winter weather advisories. Across the state, we've been expecting those, but now part of this is coming into our viewing area. You can see that purple area. That's a winter weather advisory, basically for freezing rain and the potential for icy bridges. That includes now from Giddings to Brenham to Navasota, B Dyes up toward Madisonville, North Zolts, Bryan College station, the Caldwell area. So this stays away from us, but you can already see they've had a little wintry precip out there toward Giddings as well as Bryan. So if you're in that part of the area, watch out. You could see at least a little icy bridge here and there through nine o'clock tomorrow morning. For us, it is just rain, and that's what we've been seeing today. Like you said, it's just kind of, kind of a cold, drizzle day for us. The future cast continues to keep the pink or the icy conditions off to the west, so I'm not worried about that. But look, that's nine o'clock tomorrow morning, but look, during the day. It continues to rain into tomorrow evening. And guess what tomorrow evening is? Yep, that's the cook off weather 40s and wet. I know, but you know what? That's what happens during cook off. That's right. Trail riders are used to that. And that's yes. why they put it in tents, by the way. So. Listen, we are tough. It, there's going to be a crowd no matter what. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's going to be a great, great time. Absolutely. Sure well, thanks, Frank. Well, cheers to Wine Club Wednesday. Absolutely. We're going to get to this fabulous wine. Also, another cheers to the 2022 Restaurant and Chef Awards. The semifinalists were announced in today's in advance of returning, of course, the coveted James Beard Awards. And of course, Houston's food scene did not disappoint. Y'all get ready for this. Nominated for Outstanding Restaurateur and Friend of Houston Life, Chris Williams oh, of right, Lucille's. Chris. That is fantastic. Hospitality group. We, we love lo Lucille's. We do. We love him. We love the restaurant, the mission, everything. Best New Restaurant nominee. Pier 6 Seafood and Oyster House in San Leon. Bravo. Lovely and outstanding pastry chef nomination goes to our friend Ruben Ortega from Zochi. And Hugo's is in the running for outstanding hospitality. No surprise there. Listen, also among the list are several, really seven other chefs from our area. You can see on your screen right there that you can take that could possibly take home one of the coveted awards. I did post this full article on my Facebook page, but you can head to the James Beard com as well to see all of the semi-finalists uh, for the James Beard Restaurant Award and Chef Awards as well. And these awards are going to be given out a little bit later this year, a ceremony at June 13th in Chicago at the Lyric Opera House. It's lovely there. Um, but congratulations. No big surprise. I mean, Houston's really making, now the rest of the country is getting an idea of what we have going on here. Yeah, so it's about time. Cheers. Well, cheers. And of course, the James Beard Award is sort of like the Oscars in the culinary wor world. It's a very, very big deal. So big news from the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. Officials announced the four additional performers who will join Bun B's H-Town Takeover for Black Heritage Day on Friday, March 11th. Bun B was on Houston Life, Courtney. Yes. Sort of teasing there would be more people. Finally, we know who they are. Musical artists Baby Bash, Big Pokey, and Frankie J, also H-Town, will join the all-star lineup that already includes Paul Wall, Slim Thug, Lil Flip, Lil Kiki, and Z-Row ticket prices 
prices start at just 20 bucks. They are available at rodeohouston.com. That's going to be a record setting day for sure. It will. Great without. lineup. Speaking of rodeo, of course, this year is super special because on top of welcoming this long awaited return, it's also the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo's 90th anniversary. Congratulations. To celebrate, rodeo goers can enjoy nine new attractions this year, including the Coca-Cola Ice House, commemorative tokens, and tons of phone, fun photo ops. You can also find a full list of attractions on clicktohouston.com. AJ and I were just talking about this on the way to school. He's like, what are we eating first, funnel cake or turkey leg? All right. <laughs> you already have a game plan. I mean, you have to. Well, and I can't believe tomorrow is the first day of cook-off. We're going to be down there, so say hi if you see us. Uh, and you know, the weather, at least we know. Hey, listen, you dress for it. That's all yeah, there is. We can do it. Still to come from the flowers to the food, weddings can get super pricey, right? The viral TikTok that had one caterer and some pretty hot water. Uh oh, don't go away. Houston Life will be right back. Welcome back to Houston Life. Okay, we always love bragging about moms, right? And yeah. all the jobs they do. Well, one mom in particular, I'm a huge fan of Pink, the entertainer, the singer. She's also a mom of two. What's interesting is there are her kids. Willow is 10. Her son, Jameson, I believe is six. What a beautiful family. Gorgeous family. She did a documentary too about her being on tour and how she is a hands-on mom and just trying to like balance all, being an uber rock star, right? Yeah. Well, in this conversation um, she had recently, um, she was saying that she feels the pressure, just like every other mom in the world, her daughter Willow wants a cell phone. She's like, Mom, all my friends have a cell phone. I need one. She's like, I don't care. You're not getting one. You're not getting one. So she put down her, her foot. Ever? It was Not right now. She said 10 is too young. I think a lot of parents, though, this is a, a common question that parents may have. How young is too young? How yeah. old is old enough? A lot of parents also, they want to be able to reach their kids during the day. Or in case of emergency, you right? know, when you're not around or something's happening and uh, you need to find them, or let's say they're riding a scooter in your neighborhood and you can't find them. Well, it's great to have a ping. I mean, if that ever happens. If that ever happened to anyone. If that ever but happens. But also, like, your, you know, your kids at 10, 12, 14 years old, just because a 12-year-old may have a certain maturity level in this family doesn't mean the other 12-year-old yes. is going to you be. Yes, you know your kids. You know your kids. Yeah, absolutely. So speaking of knowing your kids, let's talk about social media and teenagers. How about this? So a mom had sort of seen that her 12-year-old daughter had been struggling on social media. Okay. You know, there's so many things. Bullies, you can't escape when you get home. You can't turn it off. Right, right. So after seeing her struggles with her daughter, she made an offer to her son. If he stayed off social media until he was 18 years old, she would pay him 1800 bucks. Wow. There's the son. And uh, he signed up and he said yes. All for it. You know what? Connor is not a big social media person. He's not. AJ is definitely loves watching all the videos. So I think maybe it just kind of depends on what you're into, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, also, you you can't be with your children all the time, right? right? You don't know what they're running into on social media. We've all had that moment where we've run into something we didn't intend to, so it works for them. Absolutely. Bravo. I think it's great. Bravo, for sure. Okay, so we were talking about the cost of weddings before the break, and this is really interesting. So now I think we're going to see, you know, our, the weddings that have been postponed. There's like this onslaught of weddings coming up, and a, a lot of these weddings are saying adult only. No, do not bring your kids. This is a really interesting mm. article from Parent Magazine. And the mom that wrote it is, is a parent of a nine-month-old. She's breastfeeding. And she just started to kind of go down the rabbit hole a little bit because she got invited to a couple of adults-only weddings. And she started adding up what this was going to mean for her and her family. Some of these were, were overnight stays. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you're talking about a wedding gift, uh, an overnight stay, whether that's one or two nights in a hotel. Uh, maybe you have a dog. Yeah. You need to board the dog. Oh you need gosh. a sitter for said child that you're leaving at home. She said she added up for one wedding. It was going to cost her about $2,000 to attend a kid-free wedding. Just to make sure her kids had a, a and everything else, and the dog was taken care of. Yeah. But, I mean, what would you do? Bring, bring the kids and the dog and the whole kit and caboodle? No. I mean, if it says no, no kids, no kids. Well, right. But are we saying that couples should not have a no kids policy? No, I just think it's really maybe I think the focus of the article was saying when when you are 
asking somebody to not bring their kids, think about the, the expense of what you're asking the people, your to guests, to, to, to incur. Yeah, I think it's a valid point. Yeah. Very valid point. Hey, speaking of weddings, did you bring um, any wedding cake for me today from your freezer? Wait, don't tell me you don't have any. <laughs> You're one of those, you didn't save your wedding cake? We did, but we ate it on our first anniversary. We've been married 100 years. So when so. I was a kid, I remember my mom, there was this drawer in the freezer we were not allowed to touch because there was this really old, like 20-year-old piece of wedding cake. Some people like to save it, right? Oh, my mom did this. For their wedding. No, I was kidding. <laughs> she just fell off her chair. We burned the frozen cake <laughs> at a ceremony. So there's this couple in New Jersey, and this video went viral okay. because... Apparently, the leftover wedding cake that was behind the scenes, there was a video that went crazy on TikTok of one of the caterers taking a big bite from a chunk of leftover cake. So we do not have that video, and there's a reason why. The video was taken down because the family wanted it taken down. This is the cake. We don't have the video of the guy eating it. The family wanted it taken down. So the down. video was, was removed. Yeah, then it was okay. put back up, and then uh, there's a whole story to this. But the point was, what happens to your leftover wedding cake? And this couple was sort of incensed that one of the staff members had the nerve to have a bite. I think everyone should have a piece of the cake. I guess they were concerned that they didn't have enough cake for themselves. Wow. That's the story. It's a giant cake. Yes. So, well, anyway, live yeah. and learn. I think it's nice if you can share it. Everybody I think it's so a piece too. of cake. Everyone gets a piece of cake. Of course. Why not? All right, let's bring in Joe Sam with our question of the day. Standing by. Hey, guys, yeah, I can't wait for Lauren Kelly's wedding so I can get a piece of her cake. I know she's <laughs> going to have a tasty, tasty cake, but you know what, you guys? We want to hear from you. If you were going to go viral, what would it be for? And we already have some of those great responses coming in. Let's take a look right now. We have in Marte. She writes in tailgating shenanigans. Yeah, I love that. Look at the picture here. I love all of those people in the picture there. And then coming up next, we have Tanya. She writes in my husband photo shoot with our adoption, NASA. LOL, this one tops them all. Look at the roses Aww. in that photo. That is sweet. And then we have Catherine Wright saying, dumping boxes of Tide clothes detergent in a well-known fountain <gasps> in Houston. Oh, I would have to see that. That's going to be a video for all of us. That was 46 years ago, but it made <gasps> Channel 2 new. So we do have that video. We're going to have to go through the archives. High school prank. It looked awesome on TV. Hmm, yes, but I'm busted Catherine. now. Yeah, she uh -oh. ratted herself out. <laughs> we want you to head over to the Houston Life Facebook page. Join that conversation. We'll share more of your comments a little later on in the show. Courtney and Derek, this is something that we're going to have to go and search for. I have we to need see to go video. find that video. <laughs> it sounds like it probably turned into like a big phone party. Yeah, I've seen it happen before when I was working in Columbus. They went and poured all kind of detergent in these fountains and police were all around trying to get all the detergent from off the streets. So they had to close down the streets and everything. It was a huge prank, but it was hilarious to watch, just not to be in. Oh, man. <laughs> Who pays for the cleanup? That's my question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. No problem. All right, when we come back, KPRC2 is giving back to the community. We're chatting with the local nonprofit who's helping end homelessness and sharing how we can all help. And Lauren Kelly is taking us inside the brand new immersive Frida Kahlo exhibition. Lauren, it's beautiful. You guys, this is super cool. Her life, her art, her love. A brand new immersive Frida Kahlo exhibit just opened, and I've got all the details on her life story, her artwork, and lots more. How you can be a part of it when Houston Life returns. At KPRC2, we're proud to showcase those making a difference in the Houston area. Each month in 2022, we're partnering with Energy Transfer to showcase a different nonprofit organization offering Houstonians a helping hand. This month's KPRC2 Community Spotlight is on the Star of Hope. And joining us now is their Director of Public Relations, Scott Arthur. Scott, it's great to see you. It's great seeing you again, too. Thanks. Let's talk a little bit about the history of Star of Hope. It's very rich and the mission here in the Houston area. Star of Hope has been around uh, since 1907. We are celebrating 115 years this year. And, uh, well, we reach out to probably in the vicinity of a thousand homeless men, women and children every single day day we are there for them and we're only in houston and the surrounding area you know it's uh, we really have three... i'm sorry scott Please. go ahead 
Go ahead, please. It's really incredible when we put down the numbers, how long you've, you've been around 115 years and serving people, a thousand people, men, women, and children every single day. I hope people understand too, this is not something where you have hours, right? Where, oh, sorry, we'll talk to you tomorrow. I mean, the doors are always open. They are. I mean, we are there for them, uh, you know, 24-7. Uh, we have certain times where they check in and see if there's availability. And right now we are at capacity with this weather and, and COVID and everything. But we are there for them. And uh, we reach out to them 24-7. We serve over 5,000 meals every single week. We have three love and action bands that go out, especially on a day like today. Mm -hmm. And uh, they reach out to the street homeless and make sure that they have got uh, warm clothing and, and blankets and, and maybe an opportunity to come into the shelter. So we're there 24 seven, even during the pandemic, we never closed our doors. And I'm sure during the pandemic and here after you've seen an increase of people needing the services that maybe they never thought they would uh, in the past. That's true. And uh, we have a new extended services program that assists folks who are actually on the verge of homelessness uh, they help with uh, counseling, they find emergency uh, shelter for them, and they uh, hook them up with an agency that's appropriate to help them, uh, not necessarily homeless, but maybe help them from becoming homeless. And, you know, a lot of people think that uh, Star of Hope just is overnight, mm -hmm. and we just help the men, but we help men, women, and children, and we'd rather have them not just for two or three days, but we have them for eight or nine months or even up to a year with uh, structured recovery programs, helping them with uh, recovery from substance abuse, helping them with a strengthening of faith, uh, helping them get a job, helping them with their employment and life skills. It's really incredible, and, and I'm glad that you mentioned that uh, about the children as well. That SHU program is really incredible. Uh, real quickly, we have about 30 seconds, Scott. If we can talk about the facility, of course, we know about the downtown men's center. It could hold a couple hundred, right? Yeah, 320 downtown in men. And at the Women and Family Development Center at Star of Hope's Cornerstone Community, we can pick up uh, a total of about 180 single women and host about 130 families. It, There's nothing like it in America. There really isn't. Congratulations on 115 years helping our community. And thank you for your continued service to our community as well. Thank you. Scott Arthur with Star of Hope. And if you would like to learn more about Star of Hope, just head to SOHmission.org. And to check out more nonprofit organizations offering Houstonians a helping hand, you can head to click to Houston.com. Now we're going to send things over to Derek. All right. Thank you, Courtney. Frida Kahlo was a beloved 20th century Mexican artist, best known for compelling self-portraits and radiant pieces inspired by her life in her native country of Mexico. Now there is a brand new 360 degree immersive exhibit where you can actually step into her art and her life. And that's where we find Lauren Kelly this afternoon. Hey there, Lauren. You guys, this is so cool. You might recognize this space over here near City Center off of Britmore Road because the Van Gogh exhibit, the immersive one, that's where this one was. But now for this entire month, it's all about the life and the art of Frida Kahlo. And this is one of those things where you just have to experience it yourself to get the true, full meaning behind some of her greatest works of art. And here with more as a general manager, this is Christina Johnson. We've kind of been talking about how this space is filled up with so many wonderful pieces of art, but how many projectors does it take to do this in here? <laughs> 35 projectors it does take to kind of put this whole entire show on. Well, like when you look around and you guys are hearing the music right now, it's set to a score. You really come in, you reserve your time slot. How long do you stay and watch this? So each show is 42 minutes. However, we encourage everyone to stay for about two to three loops just to really digest everything in this entire show. And what I really thought was cool is that Frida Kahlo's parents got to experience this. What did they think of the whole Thing. Yes, the great niece and great great grandniece actually came and you know shared this experience with us here and they loved it and it was you know it brought tears to their eyes. I shouldn't say parents, I meant to say yes. family. Yes. That's who yes. I really yes. meant to say. But this is one of those things again, Christina, where you have to experience it yourself because you're really stepping in to the art. This room, I don't know if you can really grasp, is so big and so lovely. And coming up, we'll talk about more on ticket information, how you can be a part of this free to call immersive experience. Houston Life. TV for more info. You guys don't go anywhere. Christina, thank you for the <laughs> yes. info. Derek and Courtney sending it back to you guys. We just did a movie.
Very nice, Lauren Kelly. And you know, Courtney and Orlando, uh, Orlando, Brandon and I went to the exhibit last week, blown away. Stepping into that room, it's incredible how many moving parts there are. It was really beautiful, for sure. Definitely go check it out. Very, very nice. All right, so now let's send things over to Joe. Actually, no Joe. Joe Sam will be coming up. He'll be shining a light on some incredible students. And coming up, we continue our Black History coverage with a look inside the Amani School. Find out how their students are being inspired by African-American literature and community projects. And we're also going to get a check of what's coming up for the news at 4, including the big headline on our weather. Houston Life is back in two minutes. Well, welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you. Time now to get more of your responses to our question of the day. Earlier we asked, if you were to go viral, what would it be for? Uh-oh, <laughs> Jeff writes in, something I did while stage acting or dinner theater. Ooh. A lot of bloopers on stage, you know? I like that. Makes it fun. Good laughs. Crystal writes in, real life homeschooling. It's oh. good times. I get it. Yes. <laughs> Kudos to you, all the parents homeschooling. Faye writes in, my cute cat, Mimi. Oh. She has a little bit of a mischievous look to her, right? I feel like I, I'm with Faye. I need to do some more funny things with Oscar. We were talking about the, the wine, the doodle with Derek and I just send each other dog and cat videos all day long, um, but I need to probably do something with Oscar. Well, there are plenty of things I know that happened to you and that happened to me on a daily basis, probably all of us, and we think, I am so glad there was not a camera watching that because yes. that would have gone viral. The trips, the falls, the things you don't want people to see. I know, but that's good times. It is good it's times. It's funny. All right, let's bring in um, Joe, with, or I'm sorry, Christine and Keith, sorry hey. guys, and Frank. Yes. For a look at what's coming up at the top of the hour, guys, what are you going viral for? Wow. <laughs> I'm trying not to go viral yeah. with this guy. I feel like he's trying. To <laughs> I, I, uh, in, in addition to keeping us out of trouble, um, yes. I, uh, I would probably go viral for dancing, or I should probably say for not being able to dance. I actually can dance yeah. okay, but it's like I don't pick up the dance until it's like a year and a half old. Like I don't, when the, the dance is out right now, I can't do until like what a year later. What are you talking later. about the little Carlton turn? Well, that you oh, do. Well, that's well, that's my smooth OG. See, that, yeah, that's but. that's the viral mode. <laughs> I, I, I maybe I could go viral for my my Jackson Five spin. Yeah, perhaps. Oh, good lord, it's a good one. <laughs> Frank, 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 you have seen my Jackson Five spin. Yeah, 